Maybe midnight or midday Never early, never late He gon' stand by what he claimed Lived enough life to say I heard your heart, I see your pain Out in the dark, out in the rain Feel so alone, feel so afraid I heard you praying in Jesus' name It may be midnight or midday He's never early, never late He gon' stand by what he claimed I lived enough life to say Help is on the way, round in the corner Help is on the way, coming for ya Help is on the way I lived enough life to say Help is on the way Sometimes it's days, sometimes it's years Some face a lifetime of fallen tears But it's in the darkness, he's in the cold Just like the morning, he always shows Maybe midnight or midday It's never early, never late He gon' stand by what he claimed I lived enough life to say Help is on the way, round in the corner Help is on the way, coming for ya Help is on the way I lived enough life to say Help is on the way Well, I've seen my share of troubles, but the Lord ain't failed me yet. So I'm holding on to the promise, y'all, that he's rolling up his sleeves again. Said, I've seen my share of troubles, but the Lord ain't failed me yet. We'll keep holding on to the promise, y'all, that he's rolling up his sleeves again. Rolling up. Rolling up, don't you know it? I can see him rolling. Help is coming. Maybe midnight or midday. He's never early, never late. He gon' stand by what he claims. I lived enough life to say. Maybe midnight or midday. He's never early. He gon' stand by what he claimed I live enough life to say Help is on the way, round in the corner Help is on the way, coming for ya Help is on the way Stopped. <laughs> Good morning. First of all, let me just give you all kudos for being here this morning, even though it's raining. <clears throat> you are obviously faithful people, and I give you thanks for that, and I give thanks to God for all of y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. A couple of announcements this morning. First of all, <clears throat> as uh, I'm sure you all heard last week, um, President Biden signed into law the 12th federal holiday called Juneteenth. And that was yesterday. Um, it's where it celebrates the message that the Emancipation Proclamation finally reached Texas after two and a half years. So um, we celebrate with our brothers and sisters of African descent today. This coming Saturday at 4 p.m. there will be a drive-in memorial service for Betty M. Berg, so please come and let's celebrate her life. And um, this past Wednesday was a funeral for Debbie McAtee, Karen Werner's daughter. Um, we give thanks for her life, and we remember her fondly. I have nothing else this morning that I'm aware of. Um, we're broke. Every, every, the uh, Saturday morning Bible study is breaking for the summer, so we'll get started with that after Labor Day again in September. Just too much, too much going on, looks like. And, and I, I'm going to warn you about this. July 4th actually falls on Sunday this year. So um, bring your fireworks whenever you come to worship that day. And it is raining today, but this is the first time since we started worshiping outside that it has rained on us during worship. So uh, 
I guess we can get by with one day out of a year anyway. I forgot to ask God to clear it up, so um, it's my fault. So let us begin this morning. We gather this rainy day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. O oh God, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God and Jesus, the bread from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you have God's mercy. You are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Lord of all hopefulness. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength pilot us, by your power preserve us, by your wisdom instruct us, and by your hand protect us, through Jesus Christ our Savior and our Lord. Amen. We continue with the readings. The first reading is Job chapter 38, starting at verse 1. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. 
Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were the bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddled band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said thus far shall you come and no farther and here you shall proud and here shall your proud waves be stopped this is the word of the lord please read, read with me in unison from psalm 107 give thanks to the lord for the lord is good for god's mercy endures forever let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in the ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose which tossed the high waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in the peril. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper and silenced the waves of the sea. Then, when they grew calm, when they guided them into the harbor they desired, let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing. Hallelujah. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that, our, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness, for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to you as children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. 
And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. First of all, I forgot something in announcements. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. The importance of you and families is, uh, is truly, um, truly important. Mom and dad, moms are very important, but dads are just as important, so happy Father's Day. I do love this reading from Job. It's one of my favorites. It's one of those things where, uh, you know, we, we, we think we can get away with just about anything in this day and age, and, and we can probably just about get away with anything, but on occasion, we're going to have to stay put while God says to us, let me just tell you about this, son. You know, poor old Job, he, he'd been through it. He, he was a very successful man, had lots of land, all kinds of herds, you know, with goats, sheep, cows, had kids, a wife, great family, everything was going great for him. And all of a sudden, it was all taken away. And he ended up being sick. And here he is sitting in the dirt, throwing dirt on his head, we're trying to repent of whatever it was he had done to make God angry at him so that God took all this stuff away from him. And that was the Hebrew understanding of the world in those days. If you were well off, God was blessing you, and you were a righteous person, and you were doing something right. If you lost everything or you don't have anything, there's something wrong with you, and God's angry at you. That's just the way people thought. Poor old Job. His friends come by and try to give him a little bit of advice, you know, about how to get out of this situation. And finally, Job just starts complaining to God. And then we get this chapter out of Job, where God steps up to Job finally and says, Were you there when I created everything? Were you there when I set the line? You know, um... God will take all of our complaints as long as we want. No problem with that. But we need to be ready when God does reply to us because God is God and we are not. And that's the point of the book of Job. God is God and we are not. And sometimes life just sucks. Pure and simple. It's hard sometimes. Sometimes it feels like that boat that the disciples were on that night as they were crossing over the Sea of Galilee Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And, and that's where it began, folks. They're going from Galilee, where the Israelites lived, over to the Gentile side, where the Gadarene demoniac lives. That bad place. The disciples are leaving what is known to them, and they're going to the unknown, because Jesus has decided that he needs to go talk to those folks as well. In quotes, folks, those people. And then the storm starts. And that's easy to understand on the Sea of Galilee. If you've ever been to Israel and you've sat on the, on the beach of the, sea, uh, of the Sea of Galilee, it, uh, it can be just as beautiful and calm as you ever want it to be. And out of nowhere, a 20, 25 mile an hour gale wind will start rushing across as it comes down off the mountains that are on the western side of the sea and make six, eight, ten foot waves in no time flat because it's a shallow lake. And it can get really rough. Really rough. And the interesting thing about this is that Jesus is in the bow of the boat, the worst place you can ride on a rough sea, and yet he's still asleep. I don't know about that. Apparently the disciples didn't know about that either. All they knew is that life around them was chaotic and a mess. Our lives 
have been chaotic and a mess for the past year or more. But life in general, folks, is not always ordered and easy. We know that. Life is hard. Life is not about going along, you know, whistling a tune like on a Disney uh, movie. Life is about struggle. Life is about getting by. Life is about making it, even when the times are hard, the times are tough, when things aren't going the way we want them to go. But the beautiful thing about life as a follower of Jesus is this. While Job was sitting down there in the dirt, dumping dirt on his head and saying, woe is me, I can assure you that Jesus was right there next to him, dumping dirt on his head and saying, woe is me, because Jesus knows who we are, what we are, and how we are. That's the beautiful thing about being a follower of Jesus. We forget sometimes that he's there. Just like the disciples, Jesus is asleep in the bow of the boat, and they forget that he's there. He might be asleep, but he's there. And the first thing he says to them is, why are you afraid? You know, it's probably the most used um, sentence in the Bible, be not afraid, or why are you afraid? That question gets asked an awful lot in the Bible. Or you're told, don't be afraid because whoever it is is telling you that knows you're afraid. And Jesus says, I'm here. You don't need to be afraid. And then he does something that's truly remarkable. He rebukes the wind. Folks, that's exorcism language. Jesus always rebukes the unclean spirits or the demons. He rebukes the evil that is in the creation, that has been brought into the creation by us, human beings. Creation was ordered and very kindly until us human beings decided we wanted it our way. It reflects, it reflects our attitudes in many ways. And Jesus has the power to bring order to that creation simply because he is the word that was spoken at the creation that brought all of this business into being. We need to always remember when we find ourselves in those situations where we think we're alone and things are not going well, remember that Jesus is there in the midst of it with us. He's there. He's one of us. He understands us. He knows what we're going through. He's been through it. And He loves us enough. He loves us enough to be there and to suffer right along with us in the midst of it. And we can tell Him whatever we need to tell Him and He'll listen to us. But don't be surprised when He says, where's your faith? Do you still not have any faith? And maybe that word should be trust. Do we trust Jesus to be there with us all the time as he is? And do we trust ourselves to recognize when he is there, which is all the time? There's never a time when he leaves us. He promises to be with us even to the end of the age. Matthew is very clear about that. God with us in the midst of the hardness of life. So my sisters and brothers, remember Jesus is there with you, sitting in the dirt, dumping dirt on his head, and saying, woe is me, right along with you. He's there. He's there. And he's here today. He's here today in these words, and he's here today in this sacrament of which we are about to partake, the most beautiful thing in the world, in my opinion, as Jesus comes and is with us. One more time. Remember. God loves you, and Jesus is with us all the time.
God, sing with me how great our God. God will see how great God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. Pray for your blessed creation that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You keep watch over the nations. We pray for countries experience, experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted, and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and change that, chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, kindness, that through their leadership, you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, hear the prayers of your people as we lift them up to you by name or out loud in our hearts. Ron, Carolyn, Debbie's family. We pray for all who are, who are on our prayer list. Visit them with your healing spirit. <clears throat> we pray for the faculty, staff, and students of Kennesaw State University as they continue their mission of education. And we pray for our sister congregation, Mount Zion AME Church. Bless and preserve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who place themselves in harm's way as they minister to their neighbors in need. 
Guide, strengthen, and protect them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth and our Bishop Kevin. Give them the wisdom and clarity and vision they need as they lead our church in this time of pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice and racial profiling of people of color and innocent victims of racist attacks continue to plague this nation. As a church, we have made commitments to speak up for condemning white supremacy and racism, but our actions must be strong as our words. Lead us as we advocate and be a voice for those whose voices have been taken from them. Bring comfort, peace, and hope as we continue to struggle for cleansing and justice for all of our children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost their children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. My favorite part. with your very self and called us to, to the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy Holy, holy God, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. 
And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is being given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is being shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. Thanks be to God.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace to eternal life. Amen. We have received from the table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he is like the
peace, you are the body of Christ.